In this section, we're going to review some of the math skills that you'll need for this year. Mathematics is an extremely important tool for physicists. Many well-known physicists have been quoted remarking how reality seems to be mathematical in nature. Before we jump into some of the math skills that you'll need for this year, I'd like to first take a step back and have you consider what an equation actually is. An equation is a statement about how two things are, in some sense, the same. When we say that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side, what we're really saying is that they're the same in some way. Before I show you some examples of the math skills you're gonna need for this year, I think now's a good time to establish some of the vocabulary that we're going to use to describe equations throughout the year. This way you'll know what I mean when I use a certain word. Equations almost always contain variables. A variable is a symbol for a quantity that can change. You can, also, you can usually recognize a variable because it's represented by a letter. Equations also contain constants. A constant is a number that doesn't change. It is constant. Usually, constants will be represented by numbers, but sometimes we can use letters to represent constants as well. For example, here we use the Greek letter pi to represent the number pi. Equations will also contain operators. An operator takes the input of a number, manipulates it in some way, and outputs a new number. Operators include addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, exponents, roots, and the trig functions sine, cosine, and tangent. We can also describe parts of an equation. A coefficient is the number or groups of numbers that usually appear in front of a variable. A coefficient and variable make up terms. Terms are added and subtracted within an expression. The two expressions on either side of the equal sign make up the equation. Equations always have equal signs. It's a mathematical fact that you will need at least one equation for each unknown that you wanna solve for. If you need to solve for multiple unknowns, you're going to need multiple equations, and then you'll need to solve a system of equations. But most equations, where we're trying to solve for a single unknown can be solved using reverse order of operations. Working first outside of parentheses and then inside parentheses, you'll follow these steps. Undoing an operation, you'll apply the opposite operation to both sides of the equation. The first example we're going to look at is this equation v sub f equals v sub i plus a t. Part a asks, what order is the equation in t? The order of an equation is important because that will determine the graph shape that's associated with that equation. To decide what order an equation is, we're going to look at the exponent of the variable that you're interested in. Notice that t lacks an exponent. The lack of an exponent implies that the exponent is actually one. An exponent of one signals a linear equation. Part B wants us to solve the equation for T. Because there's no parentheses, we don't have to worry about them. So the first operation to be undone is the addition of V sub I. We're going to subtract V sub I from both sides to undo addition. Next, we're going to divide each side of the equation, undoing multiplication. Now we have our final result. For our next example, we're going to look at the equation k equals 1 half mv squared. Part A asks, what order is the equation in v? Again, the thing that, we're, that we need to notice is the exponent on the variable. Here the variable is, has an exponent of two, and we refer to equations with an exponent of two as quadratic. It's important to remember that all quadratic equations always have two solutions. To solve for V, we will first multiply both sides by two over M. Then we will take the square root of both sides. But don't forget the plus or minus, that gives you your 
two solutions. For our next example, we're going to look at the equation Vf, V sub F squared equals V sub I squared plus 2A delta X. Part A asks us, asks us to determine the order of the equation in VI. Again, we need to look at the exponent of our variable. Here the exponent has, uh, the variable has an exponent of 2, and it makes our equation quadratic. To solve for VI, first we have to undo addition. We'll do that by subtracting 2A delta X from both sides. Next, we can undo the exponent by taking the square root of both sides. Again, don't forget the plus or minus to give, this, to give us the two solutions for our quadratic equation. Please note that the square root does not undo the exponent of VF. Many students mistakenly think that the square root undoes the exponent. It does not. Okay, the last equation that we're going to look at in this section is x equals v sub i t plus one half a t squared. <clears throat> Part a asks us to determine the order of the equation in t. Again, we're going to look at the exponent of our variable, but you should notice that the, this equation contains a quadratic term where the t is squared, and it contains a linear term where the t has an implied exponent of 1. When determining the order of an equation, you should consider the highest order of the exponent. So here our equation is quadratic. In this case, there's only one way to solve the equation, and that's to use the quadratic formula. When solving a quadratic equation with the quadratic formula, I prefer to substitute my known values. We call those parameters. Next, we can rearrange the equation into the standard form of a quadratic equation. This allows you to more easily identify the coefficients a, b, and c. When rearranging into the standard form, you're going to make one side of the equation zero. Now we can identify the coefficients a, b, and c. The next step is to use the quadratic, form, uh, the quadratic formula with our coefficients. Don't worry, you don't have to memorize the quadratic formula. It's going to be on your equation sheet. And when working online, you can just Google quadratic equation calculator, and the computer will do all the arithmetic for you. Here's, in, here's the equation with the inserted values. And if you evaluate the right-hand side, you get our two solutions, negative 1 and negative 3. For the last part of this example, I'd like to show you that sometimes quadratic equations can be solved without use of the quadratic formula. We've already done that twice in this section already. For the values that are shown here, one of the terms is going to be eliminated. This is a special case where you don't have to use the quadratic formula to solve. If we insert the values for the numbers that we know, we can then divide every term by t. Now our equation is no longer quadratic, it is now linear. Now we can use reverse order of operations to solve for t. And we arrive at our solution that t is equal to negative 5. But wasn't the equation quadratic? Don't, don't quadratic equations have two solutions? Well, yeah, they do. If you look back at the second line on this slide, you can see that t equals 0 is also a solution to the equation. This was just a brief review of some of the math skills that you're going to need for this year. If you think that you could benefit from some extra practice for these skills, please let me know, and I will provide them for you. Thank you.